The big issue uh, about climate change is obviously that you have a period of three years, in your case, five years for us, of government. And you have to have a relatively short period before the public again decides whether they want this government or not. So democracy operates on relatively short periods, whereas you've got to fight climate change over a long period. You can't have a sort of jerky doing some bits now and then not doing anything, putting it off. Can't do that. So the idea is that we set the budgets uh, well ahead. So we've just uh, got the fifth carbon budget, which was 2028 to 2032. And that is then placed in front of Parliament. And Parliament then votes on that budget, independently produced by us. And when it's passed it, it can't change it, unless we say that the circumstances have changed to such a degree that it is reasonable to tighten or loosen it. So that gives the security to business, it gives the security to everyone else, that we really do have a programme to reach 2050 when by law we have to reduce our emissions by 80%. And of course, it's that confidence that we're on that route and that we're not going to deviate from it. And indeed the law makes it very, very difficult to deviate from it that has been extremely helpful. Is business in the UK behind this? Well, they are strongly behind it because they see that it gives them uh, some certainty, at least in one area, whereas uh, business dislikes uncertainty. So that works very well. I mean, some people are better than others. Some companies are better than others, of course. But we have some really powerful supporters of companies like Unilever um, and, and a, a large number of foreign companies, two American companies, who would find Mr Trump's arguments really unacceptable because they know that we're going to have to fight climate change and they want it done in an orderly way. They don't want suddenly to be presented with uh, panic measures. And... Um so there is strong business support then. Uh, there's no identifiable lobby group or subset of the Confederation of British Industry, for example, that's trying to push back against this. No, I must say the CBI has been extremely helpful. Um, there are, of course, people who either pretend to or actually do believe that climate change isn't happening. It's pretty difficult to be in that position but there is a group that does that and they are constantly arguing that it would be much better not to do it and we should put it off and, the, and it costs a lot of money and all those sort of arguments. So, okay, but so far we've managed to uh, see them off um, and increasingly they find it difficult because the evidence of climate change is so obvious. Never understand how the Australians manage their fifth year running of appalling temperatures not to realise the world is different. Right? In Australian terms, has politics got in the way of this? Well, I think the problem in Australia is that they allowed climate change to become a political differentiator, whereas we sought to make it a commonality because we, we knew we wouldn't be able to do it if we were arguing on both sides of it. And as in fact most people in sensible liberal politics understand the science and know that it's true and feel responsible because they know, uh, then it's easier to work together. I think it's been sad that in Australia um, people like um, uh, Mr Abbott and, uh, have made it a, a kind of ridiculous uh, position that, they, that somehow or other they can ignore the facts. And of course that's happened in the United States as well. Um, and we're very fortunate in Britain that it hasn't happened with us. Drawing on your experience as a former Minister of Agriculture and Minister of the Environment, how do we deal with emissions from animals? Well, I, I've always believed that if you have a long-term programme and you know where you're going, it's much easier to start to find long-term answers to very difficult questions. I suppose my uh, worry about New Zealand is that every time you talk about climate change, people start talking about agriculture, whereas what I want you to do is to start talking about your successes. Uh, the fact that you have got nearly 90% of renewable energy producing your electricity. So I want you to build on that. I want you to make more successful the things that you can make successful. 
to do more at home instead of buying uh, trading certificates elsewhere and making sure that when you do buy them elsewhere they're really effective and real and actually help changes elsewhere. There are a lot of things you can do which are not difficult and, but which, and would command all party support that you can deal with. Then on agriculture, much better, I think, to try to see ways in which it can be a cooperative uh, arrangement. I mean, there's a lot you can do about NOx, um, which is more difficult then to do about um, uh, methane. But start with the things that you can do about it, and then start working with farmers to find solutions, not just for New Zealand, but let New Zealand be the exemplar. Because we've all got this problem. We've all got it. You happen to have it in a more extreme case, but Britain's in the same position.